Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Chicago Electric 3 inch cutoff tool. Okay, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, how about hitting that subscribe button so you get notified of any future videos that I produce, whether it be tool reviews, DIY project, automotive project, home improvement projects, trips we take, whatever the case may be. Join the channel. You'll be happy here with the great group of people we have on this channel. Anyway, so today we're reviewing the Harbor Freight Chicago Electric 3-inch electric high-speed cutoff tool. Now, this is item number 61944 or 63023. This item retails for $24.99, but they occasionally have coupons on it for $19.99, or you could always use a 20% off or a 25% off and save yourself even more. Because Chicago Electric, you can still use the big saving coupons on it, so that's a good thing for that. I would say get this before they decide to turn this into a bower, then you can't use that coupon anymore. So for now, it's still a good deal. Anyway, so this runs on 3 amps, it has a 3 inch blade, a 3 8 inch arbor, uh, it weighs about 3.5 pounds, and it spins up to 20,000 RPMs. It's only a 1 speed, so 20,000 RPMs, that's what you get. Let's pull it out and I'll show it to you. go and it comes with the ubiquitous instructions and this is uh, your wrench to uh, put right here in case you need to uh, undo something tighten it whatever the case may be and your allen key for the arbor right here because you're going to need to use both of these to be able to change the blade one to hold the the head steady and the other one to undo it and that way you can change the blades and it does take three inch blades. This one's a little worn down, but this is what you're looking at. So you see that's worn out quite a bit. I've used that quite a bit. This is also a long term review because I've used this tool for quite a few months now. And anyway, this is the blade. I got some. It does not come with blades. I should mention that. It does not come with the blades. So get yourself some blades when you're at the store. Um, I don't know if I haven't. I've got these a while back, so I can't remember what I paid for them. Check and see. If you want to get a pack at Harbor Freight, check out Walmart too. Walmart has a lot of good prices on accessories like this. So check it out at Walmart or Harbor Freight, whatever you prefer. Uh, anyway, so this has, this is kind of um, like most other power tools where they have the switch on the side and so forth, angle grinders and so forth, kind of but a little bit smaller. This has the, what I call the flap switch, the flapper switch. I prefer this switch better. It's just more comfortable in the hand. You just click the little safety thing right here and squeeze it down and you're good to go. And it does have a lock in switch right here. So if you don't want to hold it all the time, you hold it in, push the switch and you see it locks in place. And then to release it, just let go and you're done. So I prefer these flapper switches much better. It's just so much more convenient and it always works, always. Not like the side switches here that sometimes they catch, sometimes they don't. I really don't like those. So I'm glad they went with that design on this one. It's just more convenient. With the finger, you flip it and you go. I like that style much better. Anyway, so lightweight, three inches. I mean, not three inches, three pounds. It is, there's a lot of threes in this video. Uh, three pounds, three inches, three-eighths arbor. It does have a safety cover on it, but... Um, be careful, but you can take this off. Okay, that's one little secret. They're not going to tell you, but I will tell you because I've done it. You take this off, you can put bigger blades on this. And that's the cool little thing about this tool. First of all, let me say what the tool is good for, what they're recommended for. And I'll tell you how you can go beyond the recommendations or what the tool was designed for. Because that's one thing that I like to do is figure out how to get the most out of something. If you're going to buy a tool, may as well have it do as much as possible for you. Let me put these away. Anyway, so the way it comes, it's a three inch blade, but it'll cut to a one inch depth. So it doesn't have a great deal of depth to cut through as it is designed. 
and it's designed to be operated with the cover on it, obviously for safety reasons. Uh, it's good for cutting straps, hangers, sheet metal, exhaust systems on cars, stuff like that. This is good for, uh, you know, working on cars and so forth, working on um, roofing stuff. Uh, if you do uh, AC work, uh, duct work, stuff like that, this is good for cutting through that. You just, you know, hit it and you cut it. Say you have a big piece of pipe and you need to cut it. Yeah, you can always use uh, tin snips and so forth and cut through it, but, you know, Tin snips are hard to get into. Let's say, let's say I wanted to cut off this much. Okay, getting this tin snip in there, then curving it around, getting it to, it's really rather difficult. And sometimes, like you see, this cut came out rather crooked. So if you want to get a nice, precise cut, you can just zip it around with this, and away you go. Much quicker and easier to do. So this tool is good for something like that. Um, you know, conduit. PVC pipe. I mean, this is electrical conduit, but it's all PVC anyway. So conduit, PVC, any of that kind of stuff, you can cut through it with ease. I'll show you some cutting in a minute just to go through it and demonstrate. So, you know, uh, whether you have, uh, you're doing stucco work or uh, wall repair, uh, anything you need to put this kind of mesh on to hold it back, it's great for cutting this stuff. You ever tried cutting it with this stuff? I mean, I have, and it's kind of a pain in the backside because... It always comes out all weird and funky and stuff and never cuts at a really straight line like right now watch see it's it always like mangles at it and you have to cut it at a weird angle and to get through it I, it always gives me trouble let's, let's try a different one here that one gets a little dull sometimes I use it the most but see it always wants to munch on it and give me a hard time this stuff is really hard to cut through sometimes with the tin snips, so I really hate cutting this with the tin snips. But with this, it's much quicker and easier, so I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, roofing. You're doing, uh, you know, the uh, angle edgings and stuff like that for roofing and so forth. These are, uh, you can, these are much, much easier to cut with tin snips, obviously. You just uh, hit it with the tin snip and you cut it and away you go. Uh, this one doesn't want to cut. Maybe because it has some tar and stuff on it. There you go. The tar wouldn't let me cut it on that other side. But it's much easier to cut with a tin snip than with the other one. You know, sheet metal, galvanized, stuff like that. Cuts much better. This is much easier to cut. But see how you can get a messed up... Let me get this. See, if it's, see how you get a messed up corner? See how you can get the corner kind of messed up? I, I didn't meet the two edges together perfectly. So if you want to get a perfect cut, this will go through much, much quicker and easier. Tin snips have their drawbacks. They're good, they're useful, but they have their drawbacks. So we'll demonstrate some of that stuff in just a minute. But what I was going to say is that if you want to use this tool beyond what it's meant to do, the little tip that I was going to give you is you can take off the safety cover right here and... You can put anything with the 3 8 or larger arbor on here. You can just fill in the void with a washer or something like that. And you can use, for example, cutting disc. Here I have a diamond cutting disc from uh, Harbor Freight. You can put this on there. Take off the, the uh, cover, pop it on there, and you can cut things much bigger, and it gives you a deeper cut if you need to. This is good for, you know, tile, brick, cement, that kind of thing. Uh, remember the old circular saw I showed you on a different video? Well, I took the blade off of that one, and here it is. And this is uh, a four-inch blade, I believe it is, something like that. It's bigger, bigger than the disc. But I used this on a project one time where I put, I needed to cut some wood at a weird angle, so I put this on there. Even though, even though the arbor is a little bigger, I filled it up with a washer, no problem at all, and I was able to cut that wood at a different angle. You can consider this to be like an angle grinder, but instead of the blade being flat like this, instead of the blade being this way, it's up this way. So it gives you a more convenient cut depending on what you need. It's good to have both tools, I would say. Angle grinder for some things, this tool for other things. You never know what you're going to need them for. And this is much lighter weight and smaller than an angle grinder. So you can get into weird places, weird positions, stuff like that. Uh, what I always like to say is, you can get this under a kitchen sink, 
or a bathroom sink. If you got to cut off some faucets or plumbing or something like that, that's a tight space to get it into. Uh, if you don't have, uh, you know, a saw or something that'll get you in there, like a reciprocating saw or something, this will do the job. So if you don't have one, you can use this. That's the thing. Not everybody has all the tools in the world, so you can use this for that. And like I said, the good thing about this is take off the cover here, and you can put all sorts of attachments on here. Grinding wheels, polishing wheels, uh, you know, the, the, the metal brush type ones for stripping paint and all that. If you were to take this tool and put it in your vise, lock the speed in place like, like that, so it's spinning around. And I'll show you, I'll demonstrate in a minute. You can put any kind of tool here on the end. It can be even really big. Remember, most of those things come with the auger is open, so you can adjust it to almost anything. You can put any kind of polishing wheel or anything on here and just keep it in your, your vise held in place, and it'll just spin away, and you can use it to do whatever you need. Just keep changing the ends on it, and you can have a multi-purpose tool right here. So that's the usefulness of this. Not everybody has a huge uh, work area. You don't have a huge workbench where you could have a lot of dedicated tools set up in a row next to each other to do different things. So what I do sometimes is I'll take a tool like this, strap it in a device, change the attachment on it, and I can do whatever I need to do with the odd tool. And then I can just put it away and it doesn't take up room on my bench. I am limited to a bench that's eh, maybe eight feet long, and that's about it. That's all I have. So I have to limit what I put on here. So let's take a look at what this can do. Let me get set up here and we'll do some cutting. Okay, so for ease of demonstration, I'm going to do some cutting right here on the workbench, and then some of it I'm going to do on the vise. So, what we were saying a few minutes ago, cutting this piece of uh, roofing material. Let's cut that right now and see what it looks like. Oh, let me get something to hold it up. Put this on here to hold it up for me so I don't have to struggle with it. And let's see, the tar over here was preventing the uh, tin snips from cutting through it. But this should not be a problem. through it no problem at all and this I'm doing this on a workbench right here but uh, let's say you're up uh, on a roof somewhere and you're struggling with this stuff and let's say you put this uh, let's say this is the edge of what you wanted to do instead of being flush it stuck out too far you miscalculated well trying to get in there with a tin snip and stuff you're gonna mangle up the edge you know trying to get in here with the tin snip you're gonna mangle up the edge and get it all messed up and so forth with this tool you come along you zip it off and you're good to go so it's much quicker and easier that way. Let's do something else. Like I said, cutting through one of these guys. Always a pain in the backside. Let's cut through it with this. That's it. Look at that. Look how quick and easy that was. And it gives you a nice clean cut. Nothing to mess with. Goes right through it like a knife through butter. No problem at all. No struggling with it, with the tin snips, trying to get the right angle and all that. Nope. Goes right through it. No trouble at all. Okay, so here we are at the vise, and I put in some conduit in here to cut through it real quick and show you how that works. Now, we know you can cut through this with a hacksaw if you wanted to. Takes a little longer, more time consuming. You need a lot more room to be able to move the hacksaw back and forth. You can always use one of these guys where they're meant to be for cutting PVC pipe and stuff like that, and I do have this tool on hand, but uh, I don't like using this because this tends to crack it and fracture it and makes it, you know, instead of cutting nice and neat here, you could crack it and then you have to go even further back. These I prefer to use for rubber hoses, not for PVC. So I'll show you right now how easily this, uh, this little guy right here will cut through it. that's it you're all done cut right through it let's move on to something else okay how about some uh, roofing 
uh, edging. How about that? Let's see how easily it can cut through this. Now we all know you can use a tin snip to cut through this, but why use a hand tool when you can use a power tool, right? Let's cut through it and see what it can do. There you go. Cut right through it, no problem at all. The end here is a little bent. I didn't realize that. That's why I kind of kicked it a little, because the edge was bent. We already did PVC pipe. Let's do a metal pipe. through your pipe no problem at all of course you can use a saw and so forth but sometimes a spinning wheel is better than an actual saw so this comes in handy for certain things how about some nails sometimes you have some nails sticking out of places and you want to cut through them this is very convenient for cutting nails as well let's put them both in here <laughs> Now we know you can do this with a saw, how about just a cutting wheel? There you go. Easy enough. Easy peasy. Cut right through the nail, no problem at all. And that's what this is good for. That's what this type of tool is good for. Now let me set it up in the way that I was telling you that you can use it for different purposes. Okay, so here we are. I took off the safety cover off the neck here, as you can see, and that way I can attach a much larger uh, attachment to the front of it. And by putting it in your vise like this, with the switch at a convenient location for you to turn on and off, you can turn it on, turn it on, lock it in place, and then the tool will just spin for you freely, and you can use it for whatever you need. Here I just put a, the largest one I have right now, which is the diamond cutoff blade, but you can use anything. You can use one of these wire wheels. Now, it has to have an open arbor. This one is for my drill, so I can't use this here. But if you get one of these with an open hole for the arbor, you can pop it on here and be good to go. So that would be, that would look like that. That's how that would work. Same with one of these, like one of these uh, paint stripping kind of a things. This is for my drill, obviously. But you get one with a hole instead of the drill attachment, and you can stick it in here, and again, that's what it would look like. And you can just spin this around, and this would work for you there. Uh, one of these polishing things, this is for my Dremel. I don't have a big polisher because I don't use it often enough. But if you were to get one of these polishing pads for something like this, like your uh, you know, uh, grinding wheel, that kind of thing, uh, the big ones you put on your bench, you can use this instead. Pop it on here. As long as it's bigger than 3 eighths, 3 eighths or bigger, you can pop it on this arbor. You'll be good to go. So then you can put a polishing pad on here, polishing wheel, whatever they call it, and you'll be good to go. So the attachments are totally up to your imagination. One of these uh, angled ones, one of these angled polishing ones, this is an old one that I used with my drill. You can pop it on here. They do sell all sorts of stuff for... You know, the uh, grinders you have on your bench, you can use any of those on here. Uh, for stuff that you use for uh, your angle grinder, you can put it on here. Flapper disc, all that kind of good stuff, you can put it on here. It's safely in your vise. Cr clamp it in, but don't put it too hard. You don't want to crack the case. But safely enough so it won't go anywhere. It's not, go not going to go anywhere, okay? It's not moving. As long as it's in here you're good to go. Then you just turn it on, it spins around, you hold whatever you're doing, and you're good to go. And then when you're done, put this tool away, and you don't have a dedicated tool taking up space on your bench. So that's the beauty of using this tool. All right, so let's wrap it up. Okay, so there you go. You saw how the Chicago Electric 3-inch high-speed cutoff tool works. I hope I gave you a good demonstration, showed you all the different things that you can do with it, or some of the things you can do with it, I should say. 
All of it is totally up to you. The tool has a lot of potential. You can use it for more things than what it's meant to be used for. I hope I opened your eyes to the new tool with new potential, and it's something that maybe you'll consider to put in your, your electrical tool toolbox. It may come in handy at some point. I found it to be quite useful. I've used it for quite a while now. It hasn't given me any trouble, so it's a reasonably good tool at a reasonable price. They do compare this to the Dremel at $99, and the Dremel SM2003 for $99, and that is rather expensive. So for the same thing, one quarter of the price, it's not a bad tool. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you give me a thumbs up if you liked it, and hope to see you guys again real soon. Hit that subscribe button so you get notified of future videos that I produce. Hope to see you back here again real soon. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye for now.